So, welcome back to the Great British Fishing Show. We're out on the shore. We're going to be do doing some sea fishing today off the rocks. And uh, as you can see already, I have two rods out, and I've also got a little carp rod. This is one that I've shown you before in the past. It's my the one that I had when I was about 10 years old, so the rod's around 20 years old itself. <coughs> um, and the reel as well. But uh, I'm just going to use a couple. I'm going to use a couple of jigs. I'll show you what jigs I'm using. <laughs> awkward here on the rocks trying to get comfortable <laughs> but, um, but yeah so I've got some 10 gram signed winder lures there I've also got some 25 gram these ones are nice they got the white underneath with the blue on top they give a lot of motion and what you do when you cast it out you allow it to sink to the bottom and you can jig it up through the water column you can fish off the bottom. There's a lot of kelp around the rocks, so I can see it go down. The kelp's probably about four or five foot from the bottom. And I can just bring it off the top of the kelp and just steady retrieve and bring it in through there. And I've also got one of these sidewinders. And now this, you can see that the hook's here and it tucks in. It's called a weedless sidewinder. Um, and basically what it does is, you, as you cast out and retrieve, there's no hook there to get caught in, in any weeds or any kelp or anything like that. But as soon as a fish grabs hold of it, as you can see there, grabs hold, the hook's prominent and it, and it hooks them. Um, I, I find this quite, quite good when it's very kelpy um, and when the tide's not too strong because you can just bring it through the kelp on the edge of the kelp and if you get into the kelp a little bit it doesn't really matter and it's always good to have some forceps as well just so that you can take the hook out of the fish once you've hooked the fish because sometimes they can swallow it quite a bit so always have a set of forceps with you and if need be something like this so that you can get a really good grip if you need to um, I always encourage you to have something to be able to take the out to a fish. But uh, as you see, I've already got two rods out. I've got little bells on them, and basically, the one on the left uh, it's just a, a through a through rig. Um, I'll show you in a minute when when I bring it in. And I'm just using log, the log one that I dug the other day. And I've got a few cooked prawns, so I figured I'd give them a go and see if there's anything out there as well. So on the left one, it's just one, one down, um, with a four ounce lead, because it's very quiet. I'll give you a look around the harbour in a minute. And on the right hand side, I've got a three hook flapper, um, with a four ounce lead. Probably get away with a three, to be honest, but I figured a four is okay. Um, the right one's, the right hand side's the three hook flapper. It's fished at about 50 yards. And then on the left hand side is the, the one down that's fished at about 80 yards. So I just wanted to try and get into some sand because hopefully we can pick up some flatfish. Um, it's almost mid April. Um, so it can be quite difficult because the fish are in on the move. We've got, we've got the winter fish leaving and the summer fish coming in. Be quite quiet at this at this period of time, but we'll uh, we'll look and we'll hopefully be able to find some fish to show you and Let's go again.
That was unlucky. Whatever that was, just uh, went straight into the kelp and bent the hook out. It's not the best hook in the world, but you can probably hear the wind where it's picked up now. So that's a good sign, first bite of the day. The tide's definitely coming in now. It's probably come up about a metre from where was at low tide. But yeah, it's just there. Just bend the hook back. It's not perfect, but it'll be. Let's uh, rebait and get this back out there. The beauty about fishing is that whilst it's nice to catch fish, it's also nice just to get out of the house. You know, working all week and you just get out and, and relax, just sit on the rocks, watch the boats, feel the wind on your face, and on days like this, enjoy the sunshine, because it doesn't happen too often, especially in Scotland. But yeah, it's nice because we have all these boats out here, all these trainees that are doing their yacht training. Some of them are pretty good. <laughs> I've been watching them, keeping an eye on them. Um, but yeah, one of them fell over and uh, struggled to get back up for a little while. But yeah. But yeah, it's nice. I encourage you just to get out, just to just take time and, and relax on the rocks. And I can see out here, there's one, two, there's three sets, three sets of boys that are marking pots, it's like crabs to pots and lobs to pots, but they're all within, all within a hundred yards of the shore, so I'm having to be careful where I cast, because I don't want to get snagged up in that and, and get broken off, and I don't want to damage their pots as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, and they're, they're all, they're probably all within 60, 70 yards of each other as well. You know, they're in like a triangle, you've got one just out, I'll, tell, I'll show you in a minute, but they've got one just out, probably 100 yards off the shore, one about 40 yards off the shore, and one about 60 yards. And they're just, they're just set apart in a triangle, kind of each point like this. just hope that they haven't crossed each other <laughs> you know, I, one or two of them look like they're commercial and then the other one looks like they have milk jugs so that's probably just a, a leisure fisherman just looking to, to take one home for himself I don't know if you can see but just there just out here there there's a, some boys and a bit further over, over there, you've got a flag with a boy, and then just out there, you can see, you can probably just about see that there's the other ones. But uh, but yeah, they're all so close together, and uh, you can see where I'm fishing here. It's beautiful. You go down, 
You've got the rocks just there. You've got a load of kelp, which is just out here. And it follows probably 15 yards off the, ends of the ed edge of the rock, all the way along, all the way down. And then you've got the old harbour just there. But it's very shallow, just coming up here um, on the left-hand side. And then it drops off, but there's it's where the boats come in and out be between the buoy and the harbour. The boats come all the way up here, so I don't like fishing there because we get a lot of interruption from the boats. So I prefer to fish off the end. Um, my my left-hand rod, just out there where the boys are, on the left-hand side, probably about 20 yards away from them. That's roughly where my left-hand rod is. So my right-hand rod is just probably about there, uh, so it's not too far out. But yeah, it's beautiful, you can see. All the way down. And then if I come over here, let's go underneath the rods. Sorry about the wind. I don't know if you can see down there, but you can see all the kelp. It's quite nice. It's quite, it's quite a lovely spot. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, the wind has picked right up. So the wind has really picked up, but it's uh, just, see these people over here, they've got a little speedboat, they've probably got it just for this spring. You would have thought they'd have been a little bit more considerate. All they're doing is flying about right over my baits. I asked them kindly to not do it there, but I got the middle finger. Um, obviously they think they, they have a boat, so they're better than me, but what they don't know is that I have a boat as well, just haven't been able to go out on it yet. But uh, yeah, I just I encourage you just to be mindful. Just be mindful, you know, they can see that I'm here, I'm on top of the rocks. It's not like you can't see me. And... Uh, yeah, just it's not like I would cast. You know, they're fly they're flying around on their boat, and it's not like I'm going to cast at them, is it? You know, they're coming past. I'm going to cast at them. I won't do that out of consideration. So I just ask out of their consideration if they would do it for me. But yeah, a little rant over. <laughs> Bait gone again after 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do on this one now is I'm going to put two, I'm going to put two logworm on there, just to beef up the bait a little bit. Just thread that on, on, thread it on the line. Same thing. Thread it on. Slide them both down. Slide the B 
these back down. There we go. Let's maybe try and cast this one out a little bit further. That way. I can then definitely make sure that I'm on sand and give myself enough chance to hopefully catch a flatfish. Should we do the flatfish call? <laughs> My dad used to do that. When I was a kid, he'd take us out and he would say just to give the fish a chance. He's gonna let him know that he's here. So <laughs> before he's even cast his rods out, he'll stand there and just go, 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 go <laughs> as loud as he can. And then he'll say, right, if they get caught now, it's their own fault. <laughs> he's a legend. Let's find where I put the bell. <laughs> I took it off. Where did I put it? I thought I put it in my pocket. <sighs> See, when you're fishing, you need to keep yourself organised. And it's one thing that I'm bad at keeping myself organised. Keep them there. Got my bait there. Ah, oh, there we go. Underneath my bait. <laughs> Those of you are wondering, these bells, they're all rusty now, I've had these for years. But uh, what happens is when you get a bit, when you get a bite, the rod tip just bangs like this, or you can get a little rattle, or it can bend right over, or if you've got it tight and you get a light a slack bite, it can bounce up, and these just give you a good indication of when the tip of the rod's bouncing. So I don't have to look at them all the time. Everyone. So I've had to come down here, oh, out of the wind, it's really picked up now. It's still very sunny, the sea's very flat. But the wind is just rushing through. And I've had to come down the other side of the rocks just to get away, get away from it. Uh, I've just cast out the rocks again. I think I'm going to give it another 20 minutes and then I'm going to pack up and call it a day. I've only had the one bite which took me into the kelp so I'm not sure what it was, maybe a small, small pollock or something like that. But yeah, it took me into the kelp and I bent my hook. But yeah, it's been a lovely day. Uh, I'm going to sign off here, but if I catch anything, then I'll put it in here after this. So thank you very much for watching, all the best, and I hope that you stay safe during Covid, and that your um, mental health isn't, isn't affected too much. And yeah, if you, if you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Sorry, I keep hearing the, hearing the bell go because of the wind. Yeah, please like and subscribe and hopefully we'll have some more videos coming up again soon. See you later. Bye. There might well actually be an emergency. The helicopter's gone over.
now there's also a speedboat. Three or four lifeguards on there. Let's hope whoever it is is okay. That's why you've always got to be careful out on the rocks. Make sure that you don't come down here when it's too windy and wet and wet because you'll slip. You'll hurt yourself or fall again. 